Yeah, I want to display, this is the Sabre Defense 6.5 Grindel. It's the AR-15 platform. And um, this is one thing where I think the AR-15 platform totally excels. The one problem is I wish the military would adopt this round. And you know, it might be possible that Russia is going to adopt this round before the United States, even though it was developed in the United States. Um... Just want to say a little more about this. It does use the okay. It uses the AR-15 platform. I also wanted to mount the M7 bayonet on here because uh, one of the ARs I have does not have the provision for the bayonet lug, and I don't know if you can actually put an adapter on it. You might be able to, um, but usually what changes the the front sight, the front sight itself. So. It's this right here. That's where the bayonet lug is. On some versions of, I don't know, they make them for like, they call them sporter or whatever. They don't have a bayonet lug. To me, it's where the bayonet lug actually can be useful. And it's not necessarily for the bayonet, but I wanted to display what it, you know, that's how it mounts. Where it could be useful is you could put a little mini Picatinny rail on here. Um, where you could put a flashlight on it or something. That could be useful. Bayonet could be useful too. I mean, um, I, I you know, <laughs> the truth. If I was going wild boar hunting, I almost want to put that bayonet on there. It doesn't extend too much more uh, length on this 16-inch barrel carbine version of the Grendel. You can see these have the shorter hand guards on it. Typically, the hand guards would be up to about here. I think the length on the A2, if I remember correctly, was 39.34 inches. Just doing that from memory 20 years ago. Okay. I <laughs> probably remember it though. God, I'll tell you, probably, you know, some people went to extremes in learning things. And I was one of the people that, not just learning, but working out and all that, shooting and doing everything. Well, I just want to go and want to talk about that. But uh, this weapon is, you can use the standard, um, <laughs> I had it on fire, but there's nothing in there. It's, it's empty. Um, the reason I had it on fire is because what I do typically is when I store these, um, I have the trigger go forward and it takes pressure off that spring. I don't think that's really all that necessary, but that's why I put it on fire. So you can't, the hammer will be back when it's on safe. So, you know, when you have it on fire... Just to double check, nothing's in there like that. The hammer's forward, so that's a lot of times that's the way I store them to take that pressure off the trigger spring. Now, a little word um, about the Grendel. You know, some people say about the bolt breaking, breakage, and all this kind of garbage. It's that is true with some of the cheap ones. This is a Sabre Arms. This one's made by, to the same specifications as the um, Alexander Arms. There's your bolt right here sometime. And this actually happens on the, um, the AK-47s. I mean, it's a different design bolt than this, but it actually even happens on the AK-47s. There is a service life on everything. Uh, with the Grendel, you're firing a hotter round than the 5.56. This is a um, 6.5 by 30, 39 millimeter. It's actually not a new round. This round, is, it was a 6.5 Swedish. It's been used many decades ago, except where it's new. It's been put in uh, a shorter case, which namely, it's basically, a, it, made, it was made from a, it's actually a wildcat of the AK-47 round. The 7.62 by 39, and so it's it's a shorter round. Actually, the 6.5 Swedish projectile, this is probably the worst uh, casing to use. It's better to use a bigger casing, but you need a shorter casing to work with these higher capacity magazines. This takes 25 rounds. It's about the same length as the 30 round 5.56, 5, but you have um, far more power in these. 
Geese you can really hunt with anything practically. I mean, except for really, really large game. You really could hunt any, almost anything with this. The standard weight bullet is a 123 grain, but it's got a hell of a lot more velocity and muzzle energy than the AK-47. Far more. I personally think there's just, well, I think uh, the Russians are coming out with a, a civilian AK-47 in Grendel fairly soon, the 6.5 Grendel. They'll sell it to the American market. The Americans will beef up their military industry, and they'll probably have their military use it. I almost think that's what's going to happen, man. It's, it's, I'm so freaking pissed off that the American military didn't adopt this. The bolt breakage stuff is BS. Actually, this bolt is not crappy. It's uh, made to Alexander Arms specification. This is this is this weapon. This upper is made by Saber. This lower is a Colt. You know, there's nothing crap here. That's for sure. Um, but there's also an extreme duty bolt you can buy that has like webbing reinforced in between here. The problem with some of the bolt breakage is actually what they do is they take the actual M16 5.56 bolt and they just, I don't know, they ream it out or some crap and, and they don't, they're not made to spec. They're making, they're actually machining a standard 5.56 round bolt to fit this cartridge inside of there. So, you know... I, you know, one of the things, though, that makes me want to stick with, you know, I really kind of like it's really Tavor, but to tell you the truth, the reason I'm going to stay with this is because I'm very familiar with this platform, and that's one of the advantages um, that, you know, you're, you know what, you know what's going on with it, because people know about, um, you know, they know how to use it, you know, you know what I'm saying? People know how to use this this M16 platform, and that's that's the whole key. That's why there's a beauty where you can just change uppers. You know the old, the problem is the uppers aren't that cheap either, man. It's like you buy an upper for this thing. It's like you could probably buy a whole rifle, some some another rifle for about the same money or even less. But it it, it it's still good because. Um, if you have a lot of parts, if you have, like I have the thing that can take off the barrel, the special wrench. I have the special wrench for taking off the uh, flash suppressor. Um, I have the head spacing tools for, well not the Grendel, I actually have it for the uh, 50 BMG and also the uh, 5.56. 5. Um, this ammunition is not cheap. Um, what I want to do is I have about 500 brass AK-47 brass. Now I also have something that fires AK-47 too, right? Um, it, you know, civilian version, semi-automatic, that kind of garbage. This is semi-automatic. You know, it's not. It's you know, it's safe and fired. That's that's all it is, right? Um, I also have the uh, something that fires the AK-47 round. Actually, that, that is a good rifle too. Um, and but the thing is um i want to take that brass and make it into this now you could fire form it and, and there might be a way to actually fire form it without fire actually firing around though using some kind of uh water pressure and a punch or something i think there's a method of doing that but because uh that's a lot of work to freaking load up 500 rounds and fire them at a low pressure just to fire form something so you can make some brass uh it's actually cheaper to buy i saw the um this stuff i think is made in wolf is made in russia but this this wolf gold i think is made in uh czechoslovakia um i'm more for buying usa stuff but I just wanted to get the brass, and I bought a bunch of AK-47 brass made in the USA. Um, it would be good to get the true reloadable wolf ammunition to gold. And once you fire it, you know, I got the loading dies. You can reload it. Um, 
This stuff you can use the hydrogen 335, the same type of powder, which is very good for the, uh, the, the you know, the Remington 223 or the, uh, you know, the NATO 5.56, the same powder, so that's good. As a matter of fact, I forgot that with the 30 odd 6, I think it's possible to use hydrogen 335 with some of the lighter bullets. But what I really, I think I used uh, Winchester 296. Um, but what I like about this is like the Grendel, the Grendel you can actually hunt with. I mean, yeah, you're not going to hunt with it. Well, I guess some places will let you run, run 25 round magazine, but usually it's a five round magazine. Um, it actually is a round that'll work. This system is like flawless. I guess the AK-47 will handle dirt better or something, but this thing seems to work very well. I mean, you know, this has been around, this AR type system has been around, the Armor Light type system has been around for, a, you know, in existence in the U.S. military longer than any other rifle system. This is this has been around the longest. So, you know, either even if you use a AK-47 round. It's really too weak. I guess it could be used for hunting, but it's it's generally kind of on a weak side. The 5.56 five, round is generally on a weak side, but the 6.5 Grendel is not. So, but uh, you got to make sure you get a quality upper, because if you don't get a quality upper, you will have. There's people that actually make these uppers that don't have chrome lined barrels. Um, the bolts aren't chrome. The bolts are maybe to the right dimensions but they've been milled from 5.56 five, bolts that's where you're hearing the stuff about the um, freaking bolt breakage <laughs> and this one does that's I just want to show you how to uh, you know the, the bayonet mounts on there now like the bayonet mount you might think you know why do I need a bayonet lug mount you might not need it for the bayonet now if you're hunting a wild boar it might not be a bad idea because that damn things man those things are sneaky man especially when it's um because they're only you know where they turn out to be around it's like you know right around the sunset or sunrise you know that's when they're around right um they really come out at night but uh, but they, they, when you're hunting, like right around at dusk time, you usually can't see those damn things, and they they freaking move, man. Um, <laughs> you might hit them, or you might miss them. I'd always like to have this on the end of the rifle. That's actually where the bayonet came from in the first place. I think it was actually more from hunt. It was really historically more for hunting than it was for military purposes, because when people were hunting an animal with a with a weapon. Um, they'd have one shot, and the one shot would wound the animal, and the animal would come after them. They had to bayonet on the end of the rifle, so they can use it like a big sword. In the case of a wild boar, those things are crazy. And I remember those things, man. They're really crazy, I'll tell you the truth. <laughs> you wouldn't think that uh, they're like that. Sometimes, you know, I wish you could load up 25 rounds for those damn things. But anyway, um, this also has the removable carrying handle with the Picatinny rail. Now you can mount a scope real low to this. I don't like doing that. Um, I personally like having the scope up higher. It's not that the scope is um, in a better position. Like I don't have a scope mounted on this rifle. I have it on another one. But um, that's an AR. But it's not that it's in a better position because you don't get that cheek weld back here and sometimes they add this you know what I don't I don't get into all that shit to tell you the truth uh, I'll tell you something like when I was firing even on a KD course um, you know I got like battalion high shooter 242 I can st but you know that's not that wasn't just luck because I even got all my uh, some well, not all of them I got some of my uh, you know the range books and uh, consistently shooting 230 something that's not shit <laughs> tell you the truth that now when you're doing that and that's you know what that's from i used to i used to i used to shoot a lot on the weekends besides it wasn't from the military per se it was me i used to reload my own ammo yeah and a word about that is if you reload your own ammo what i used to do was um load the ammo a little on not real light but not on a hot side because 
when you load ammo on the hot side, sometimes they fire some of the stronger ammo more towards the hot side, but that'll wear out your barrel. It's like the same principle of, you know, if you're in a car and you got a four speed and you know you got your you, know, you pop the clutch at a standing start light, that tends to break transmissions and differentials. Well, just backing off just a hair on things makes stuff last a lot longer. Because I put about ten thousand rounds through my um, my Colt 1991A1 model at Series 80, the pistol and. The barrel's not worn out because I use 4.9 grains of Winchester 231 with plain lead um, uh, 230 grain and not even copper jacketed. And you got to clean out the lead fouling, but I used the right stuff to do it. I just let it soak, you know. I didn't really scrub the hell out of it. Actually, these rifles I want to point out too. When you clean them, you clean them from the backside. And. Um, where you really can screw up the accuracy is with the cleaning rods. If you rub that cleaning rod in here and it gets on the edge of the weapon, I could probably make a separate video about it. You know, but that's something I don't know if people say this kind of stuff. Cleaning rods will screw up the barrels. Actually, when I was shooting the um, consistent 230 something, actually, you know, in a qual day 242, um, always expert. Always, you know, I don't want to brag, but that's 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 caused that that's from practice. But I never used um, a shooting jacket. I never used match ammunition. I never used a match barrel. I just used the standard stuff out of the armory, whatever rounds they gave me. I didn't use a leather sling. I used nothing like that. No no sunglasses, shooting glasses, none of that crap. Use camis, the web sling that came with the rifle, with the standard issue stuff, and that's how good I shot. But that's practice. That's practice, and it's not like one day thing. It was, I was always, I I got the uh, stuff that shows it. Still, it's in there, the book. You know, you got to add up all the points and shit. So, um, but that's that kind of tells you a little bit. A little bit about my experience. I probably could have been a pretty damn good competitive shooter too, but um, I just did it for fun, you know. More not fun, but so I know my shit, which comes in handy in other situations. Guarantee you, definitely comes in handy. Um, I wish the military would adopt this, but um, this I think is the ultimate rifle, actually. You know, it's got a shorter barrel on it. A shorter barrel is not going to make... I don't know what the overall length on is. So it's uh, it's probably about 36 inches, roughly, I'd say, versus about 40 inches. So it doesn't really cut down the velocity that much. Um, it's still thicker up here, so it doesn't have that uh, barrel whip. That was another improvement on the A2 over the A1. They thickened it up. The H-bar, the high barrel... Uh, Colt is thick all the way through. And so, um, but to me, this the ultimate. The problem is this: this ammunition is not. It's not like it's not NATO ammunition. That's what sucks about it. I wish it was NATO ammunition. Buy a case of it or something. You know, thousand rounds, reloadable. So, but I do have a lot of these magazines, twenty-five rounders, and. I'm not going to put anything on this, you know, I mean, I have a bunch of slings, slings for this thing and all this kind of crap. Um, the only thing I'd probably put on this thing is the extreme duty bolt and uh, a optics up here with you could, where you could still see the, the iron sights because the iron sights are vital. You want these iron sights. Is it, um, like in other words, you got your... I never use these. It's just called the, you know, the night sights. They got a bigger hole in the back here. Tell you the truth, though, that's one advantage where a scope is big time. It's like a scope will give you so much more clarity in low light conditions. It's beyond ridiculous. It doesn't even have to be a good scope. It could be any scope. Trying to look it through those iron sights in low light conditions sucks. Um. You could pick out detail much, much farther away, even with it, the crappiest scope going. 
I'm not talking any special freaking stuff. I mean, even a crap. But, you know, it's it pays to get something fairly good, but you don't have to sp spend a lot of money. Any scope will vastly improve your low light conditions. I'm kind of throwing a lot of different things on here, just from recollection, recollection of different things. Maybe, you know, I could play like 15 two-minute videos on this and talk about the scope and shit and about the cleaning and all that crap, but I'm actually dropping a lot of dimes on here about this stuff. Um, this weapon system, you can't argue that... I know some people will argue. I think it's the greatest one involved. The one I think that's going to be better than this, though, is probably the Israeli Tavor, the one that's just out for the last few years, the bullpup design. Um, but then again, I kind of like that bullpup design because all the weight's in the back here. But with a short barrel rifle, this is pretty good, too. And it is a, being a little bit longer when you got a bayonet on it that's one disadvantage I guess of a bullpup design the whole thing is so damn short the bayonet might not be you know you might want an extra f half a foot out there when you got a bayonet on there too right so everything's got pluses and minuses I sure as hell wish NATO would adopt this round man this this I knew this has been this grandel has been around a long time it's like People that are in the know in the military are like, adopt the damn 6.5 Grendel. Screw NATO. The Marine Corps can just only have it, period. I almost have a feeling that the Russians are going to wind up adopting it. And we developed it here, and they adopt it. Watch. Which I don't have nothing against the Russians, but they're pretty corrupt on the top. You know what I mean? I'm talking about the Russian people. So, anyway, um, yeah, this also has, just like your A2, it has the forward assist with the round. Uh, you know, the original AR-15s didn't have a forward assist, but, you know, they had the right powder in there, they're freaking good. What you do is you just slingshot the weapon, and then it'll load the round, no problem, even without the forward assist. I rarely ever use that forward assist, man, it's, but it's, it could be, it could be needed sometimes. It's actually faster to just slingshot the weapon, which means, you know, you pull back the bolt for the charging handle like this. I can't do it because this thing is, I'd have to have it, you know, held like that. That'll actually cycle around better than screwing around with this thing, usually, usually. Um, this is also for ejecting the brass so it doesn't get in the shooter's face. That's what that's for. This also has, you can flip this down. Is trigger guard down in case you're wearing big gloves and you can't get your finger in here too good so you can flip this trigger down that's another thing your cleaning kit is in the back here you just pop this open and uh, it's right here the latch is right here your cleaning kits right in here but then again be careful how you clean these weapons because more weapons got screwed up with accuracy due to the way they were cleaned than from firing rounds and you can't get a lot of rounds through here, and you get a lot more barrel life. It's like you put, you know, there's a range of where you put the powder. I always put it on the low end of the spectrum. And it really increases the hell out of your barrel life. But I'm not afraid to wear out the barrels because I got the tools and the headspace engaged to change these barrels. So it's not like I don't have to change the whole upper. I could just change the barrel. I got all the tools for it. So, I know how to do that shit too. Anyway, just want to give you a little highlight here. This is the Sabre 6.5 Grendel. It is made to Alexander Arms specifications. Um, I would say get a weapon also with a bayonet lug on it. Um, because you can put a little mini pick and tinny rail up there with a flashlight. That might not be a bad thing. You know. And I don't, I probably am never going to get that though. I think the only thing I'd ever get on this thing is the extra heavy duty bolt. And because like I said, I, don't, I am not one to freaking, you know, match trigger. That was another stupid thing. I never freaking had a match trigger. Never. Never. Nope. 
You know what it's called? Practice. That's what it's called, man. Practice. And you know what? I probably need to get back there and start doing that shit again. Anyway, this is the 6.5 Grandel. To me, this is the greatest rifle made as of right now. If the Israelis make the Tavora and the 6.5 Grendel, I think I'll be on with them. But I'm familiar with this. This I'm very familiar with. I don't feel like learning something new. And this works anyway, so that's fine by me.